Hello everybody! Uh, today I'm in Jingmai, we're in mid-April 2018 and we have quite a sunny weather and some good material available so I think uh, it's a good time to make some black tea. Okay, so today uh, I'm gonna show you how we make a simple sun-dried uh, Yunnan black tea. So on those flat bamboo baskets uh, we have put some uh, gushu material like leaves, tea leaves from, that come from the ancient tea gardens of Jingmai we put them uh, to withering, so they've been uh, laying on this uh, on these flat bamboo baskets for about uh, 18 hours now. Uh, we put them in quite a thin layer, and so the purpose of this uh, withering step is to uh, soften the leaves to make sure that the the stems don't break. So to to check if there's enough withering uh, to make black tea, you have to to twist the the tea, le the tea stems and uh, if they are flexible enough so as not to break then uh, that's okay we can do the rolling okay the, so the main purpose of the withering um, is to to soften the leaves so that they don't break during rolling okay uh, now during withering we have a beginning of oxidation of course but this oxidation rate is quite slow because we haven't rolled the tea yet so all the tea juices, the polyphenols and the, the, the enzymes are still uh, stuck inside the, the leaf cells so that means the oxidation will be slow okay uh, now what we really want in, during withering is water to evaporate so the evaporation rate of water really depends on how thick you, you put uh, the leaves Okay, so we've put them in a thin layer so that uh, 12 to 18 hours of withering are enough to make that black tea. So when you're, you're doing that withering for black tea, you really have to put thin layers. Otherwise, your, your leaves will start oxidizing, oxidizing but they're not going to lose enough uh, turgescency. They're not going to soften enough um, not to break down during the rolling. Okay, so now I'm going to put uh, these leaves in a flat bamboo basket and we're going to pile them up and put them in the rolling machine that you can see over there. So in each batch, uh, in, each batch uh, in the rolling machine I'm going to put about what maybe 10 to 15 kilo of um, fresh leaves but of course it really depends on the size of your rolling machine. Here we have a small one. I'm going to put uh, the fresh leaves in the rolling machine so it's okay to, to pack them quite tightly because anyway uh, now they are much more bulky than they, than they will be uh, after rolling so it's not a problem to press them into the rolling machine as long as the withering was well done the leaves are flexible enough not to break so it's not a problem to apply pressure on them it's actually uh, the goal, it's actually the purpose of rolling. During rolling, we're going to break down uh, the cells through like a, a mechanical work. Because let me remind you that uh, for black tea processing, there's no cooking step. So when you make poor tea, you, you break down the cells when during the Sha Qing, when cooking the leaves, okay? Uh, well, you can think of like cooking vegetables, of course, uh, when, you put them, when you put them at first they are very bulky and as you cook them uh, they tend to shrink. Um, and that's what's going to happen during rolling, okay? For poor tea it happens during sha qing and for uh, black tea it, it happens during rolling. Okay, I have quite a lot of leaves here, but it shouldn't be a problem. Maybe the initial pressure will be quite high so you can see there's just a it's a very simple machine now huh? there's just a lid, a lid on top the machine is rotating against some little blades that are uh, shaped on the base um, on the base of the machine so the leaves are going to be shuffled inside uh, inside the box here and as they are shuffled they are pressed against the lid and that's how you get that uh, rolling, that rolling work. 
Uh, in some places of the world it can also be done by hand, but it's a very long job and, uh, well, uh, most of the time it's done in a machine, really. And the machine tends to give a more consistent and, and potentially higher pressure than what you could apply by hand. So the rolling is going to last for um, about one hour, so it's a really long rolling. Uh, let me remind you that for poor tea rolling lasts only about four to six minutes, I would say. Uh, so here we have a rolling process, but it's a totally different purpose and um, objective, totally different from uh, what we do with rolling in poor tea. So I'm going to start the machine now. Okay. Back here, and so, um, so now you can see the machine moving. And um, at the beginning, we don't apply much pressure. We have to leave some time for the leaves to shrink a little bit due to the mechanical work. And maybe after five minutes, we're going to increase the pressure uh, by moving moving the lid the lid down. Okay, so now our tea has been rolling for about five minutes. Uh, just to show you, I'm going to stop the machine and open the lid. So, to show you uh, what the leaves look like now. So you can see they, they look a bit like green tea now because they, they have shrunk a little bit due to mechanical action. Uh, in some way you could say they look a bit li like, a, like a poor tea during shatting, you know. They are half shrunk, they, they aren't totally uh, broken down. When you touch them, you can feel they are a bit wet. Uh, that's because the juices are being extracted from the leaves. Uh, we're just like pressing the leaves and squeezing the water out of them. So now I'm gonna close the lid again and notice that here I'm gonna put the lid uh, down a little bit, okay? And I'm going to do, so now that there's more pressure uh, than before on the leaves, I'm going to start the machine again for five minutes and we'll see what happens. So five minutes have passed again, I'm going to stop the machine again. It's just to show you, that's not the usual procedure. Just to show you what the leaves look like. So you can see that um, there are uh, they, they have shrunk again, like they are again more pressed than the last time I showed you. And they are still green since not much time has passed, okay? Um, but I can feel they're, they are more wet than before because more juices are being extracted. So now you can think that the, the, oxid the oxidation rate um, is getting higher and higher. It means that within a couple of hours the, the, the tea leaves will turn red okay now if i smell it it still smells very fresh like freshly cut grass and um, at the end of the rolling well even during the rolling uh, the fragrance will change okay it's gonna go from more grassy grassy fragrance to more floral and maybe even after more fruity fragrances but we'll, we'll see that during oxidation okay so um, I'm not going to show you every time we do this, but um, I'm going to close the lid and this time I'm going to just uh, leave it more open than before so as to let the water, uh, the surface water evaporate because we don't want that water to accumulate as we press the tea. We want it to evaporate so uh, we have to alternate between cycle in which we press the tea and cycles in which we release the lid so as to let the, the machine move and at the same time let the water evaporate. So I'm gonna uh, start the machine again for five minutes in this position and afterwards uh, in five minutes I will go again with pressing and that time at that time I will press it even more and that's the the purpose that's why the rolling is so long because we want to slowly squeeze the tea leaves um, and every time, every time we squeeze more, afterwards we have to release the pressure to let water evaporate. Okay? So, now, let's release the lid, the lid and start the rolling again.
are now at the end of our rolling process. After about one hour and uh, about uh, five cycles of pressing and releasing, uh, of pressing the the lid against the leaves and releasing it. So now the um, the tea leaves have a, have a very different shape uh, from what they had at the beginning. So I'm just going to clean a little bit this rolling machine and now we're going to go on the oxidation part. So have a look at the leaves now. But you should be here really to, to touch them because now they feel kind of oily, they are juicy but with more some kind of oiliness, the, the, the texture is very very pleasant. It feels very soft and wow, the smell is uh, very flowery now. So we, we've had um, a, beginning, a beginning of oxidation now because well it's been rolling for about one hour and that means that um, it started oxidizing uh, quickly one hour ago. So let's say we're now one hour into the oxidation and now we're going to do the, the proper oxidation phase and that means uh, letting rest the tea in a pile so that uh, the enzymes can work. Okay now the tea juices are all over they are all over the surface of the leaves now we have to leave them some time uh, to work and oxidize the polyphenols. So we're now just outside our, our tea factory and um, this time we're, we're gonna do the oxidation under the sun uh, because we're, we're processing this tea during the day and uh, we can take advantage of the strong sun which hopefully will come out as soon as it gets clear. Yeah, see, I just call for the sun. It's coming now. So I'm just going to pile, pile the tea up about 20 to 30 centimeters thick uh, in the center. Make a pile like this and simply cover it uh, with some, uh, some bags or anything. Anything that can uh, keep, keep the heat in and to some extent limit the air flow. Okay, but it's mainly for keeping the heat in. Uh, take note of the, the color of this batch. And um, just here actually we have a second batch that has been oxidizing for uh, one hour and 30 minutes now. And you can clearly see the difference. So it's quite, it's quite warm because it's been heated up by the sun and it's heating from the, the enzymes working inside. So there's heat coming from the inside of the pile and heat that uh, heats up from the outside due to the sun. And well, look at the difference between those two leaves. And in one, one hour, one to two hours, these leaves will just look like this. And now we have a very different fragrance in these leaves. So it starts to look more like a black tea. This one we're gonna let it oxidize for maybe just a little bit more, maybe give it half an hour more and then we're gonna sun dry it, okay? Um, well, sun drying tea, uh, the problem compared to, the problem of sun drying compared to uh, drying with hot air is that you, you have to rely on, on the time of the day. So most of the time you, you want to make your tea uh, during the evening, uh, late in the evening so that it's gonna oxidize overnight. Uh, at low temperature because it will be at night you won't have uh, the sun heating it up so it's gonna oxidize over maybe six six hours six to eight hours at low temperature and then you can dry it the next day uh, that's like the the common method but if you can also make tea uh, during the day we we started making this tea in the morning and now it's uh, oxidizing so we use the sun uh, at higher temperature the oxidation process goes faster, much faster actually, and I think we'll only need, we'll only need like three hours of oxidation. Uh, yeah, three hours of oxidation will be enough at uh, this relatively high temperature. I would say by touching, I would say 
the temperature inside the pile is about 40 degree uh, while at night it would be more like 20 degree or 15 something like this so I'm just gonna put those bags here so of course this is very small scale production uh, it, it has nothing to do really with the um, with how it's made in, in most of the world or in, in different areas or even by bigger factories but uh, today I just want to show you um, yeah, a very low-tech way of uh, making this black tea and that's typically how uh, smallholder tea farmers make black tea here okay so we're gonna let this uh, tea oxidize for some time and when, when it will be ready we'll go to drying And here is what the tea looks like, the tea we just got in the greenhouse. So it's just out of the drying mats. <coughs> you can see uh, <coughs> this tea doesn't look very good, like in a way it's not very tippy, okay, because it's gushu material. And especially the material we got yesterday uh, was, quite, uh, was quite old actually. We, we kind of let the flush uh, grow old before picking it. So. Well, maybe that was due to bad management or something like that. Well, sometimes it's hard to, to follow uh, the, different, uh, the different tea gardens growing and harvesting them at, at the right time. But it's not a problem to have a, a slightly uh, a coarser uh, leaf grade because uh, usually it gives a better mouthfeel in the cup, I would say. It's mainly on the aspect, like maybe many people like to have very tippy tea, um, but if you're really into the taste of tea, uh, you can have very interesting things with slightly coarse things like this. So I'm going to brew just a little bit of that just to, to test it, try it. Now, it, since it's, it's just out of the drying mats, uh, it's going to taste uh, very different, very fresh, but very different from what you can get um, by tasting it after maybe two weeks or so. Okay. Um, I know it's recommended to use 90 degree water for brewing black tea, but really in the professional world in Yunnan, when we try black tea, we typically use 100 degree water. Um, I think it's better because you can't hide anything, like maybe uh, the harsher side of the tea will come out, but uh, I think it's better when you're, when you're testing tea. Well, typically I use 100 degree water. I, I use boiling water even for black tea. So I'm just gonna rinse, give it a quick rinse so you can see. Since the rolling was very tight, uh, everything comes out even during the rinse. Uh, of course you could say the rinse is optional, uh, but well, yeah, we do it more like a habit. And you know it's always good because you don't know what can happen um, during the tea processing maybe some dust can accumulate on the tea maybe during withering for example so I think it's always good to rinse the tea just give it a quick rinse so that you don't take too much uh, taste out out of the tea so yeah so we have interesting fragrance in the cup in the in the pitcher we're going to do the first brew so you see that I brew it Kung Fu style just like a poor tea maybe that's a, a habit from Yunnan of course you can use uh, different ways for brewing uh, different teas for brewing black tea you can you can brew that kind of tea either in a mug or in a large teapot but typically I still prefer Gong Fu, Gong Fu style to get most of, out of the tea so what I can see here is that uh, the tea soup looks quite thick it looks quite oily. It's kind of sticky. It sticks to the to the the walls of the of the glass of the pitcher. So 
I think that's a good sign. Usually it means that you're gonna get good good mouthfeel. You can see it's also quite dark, so I would say it's uh, quite a high oxidation degree we have here. Well, I would say medium high. It's not. Uh, it could be higher than this, and then the the tea soup would be uh, redder. Now you can see it's still quite orange. If it was light oxidation, it would would be yellow orange, like, like you typically get in like Dansong or uh, or Oriental Beauty. So. So what's interesting with this tea is um, the fragrance is not really. The fragrance is more in the soup, you know, and you get it in the mouth, but you don't get it that much in the nose, actually. A little bit like poor tea. You know, this kind of uh, sun-dried black tea is more for poor tea lo lovers, I would say, because you still get a good, a good mouth feel. You, you get almost similar, similar mouth feel as to, to poor tea, actually but with more oxidation and more of a black tea personality. But it's a bit, it's a bit in between, I would say, in between poor tea and, and classical black tea. Of course, if you use, the, if you use uh, hot air to dry the tea, then you'd get much more fragrance out of the cup, uh, even straight, from the, straight out of the factory. Usually with Shai Qing, uh, this tea, Shai Qing, like sun-dried black tea, is, is called Shai Qing, okay? Uh, Shai Qing has a, a better aging potential, I would say. So it's not at, it, at its best when it's just out of the factory. You should wait for at least a couple of months before being able to really fully enjoy it. But what I like in this tea is um, you can feel stuff in your mouth, you know. It's a thick, yeah, you can say it's, it's a thick soup. It has some bitterness. Uh, quite fast changing bitterness, a little bit of sourness, but not too much, not very, uh, not very obnoxious, not, not very disturbing. But I would say that's clearly a tea for the, um, for the mouthfeel, you know, not really a tea for the fragrance. So it's quite a, an interesting result. Mm. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to age in the future. Um, now you've seen that black tea processing video. Uh, you can see that black tea processing uh, is a bit more complex, I would say, than poor tea processing. Or maybe it's because we, we're less used to making black tea. But I would say there are more parameters that can affect the taste uh, of black tea and in a more dramatic way. I would say, first, you, you have the withering rolling and uh, oxidation well I would say all of those phases are quite crucial to the making to the crafting of a black tea um, so it would be interesting to uh, to research further to see really how each of these steps influence the final taste of tea and this is some research that we're doing now but um, I hope in the future we can make a more detailed video about each uh, about each step of the black tea processing now we just wanted to show you a kind of a basic uh, yeah a basic simple way of making poor tea and as I said in the beginning of the video it's the way we make it in Jing Mai and of course it's the general way there can be uh, variations depending on the tea producers so some producers for example during withering they might want to uh, to give it a sun wilting, it means like withering under the sun for a short amount of time that will soften the leaves. Uh, some people, well, uh, there are different ways of uh, oxidizing the tea, the, the size of the pile, the temperature during oxidation. Uh, these are all parameters that can, uh, well, that can be tweaked and that will definitely affect the, the taste of tea. So. I, I hope we'll be able to make more advanced videos about that black tea processing. Uh, waiting for that, I hope you'll have a great cup of tea. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and like our video. And see you next time. Bye-bye.